Well, this is our uh, first set of shows for our Halloween weekend, and boy, both shows, Halloween night so far, are sold out. Um, and we've got quite the line going already. We open in about half an hour. Okay. It's first time being in the theater, right? Yeah. Are you ready to be traumatized for the rest of your life? Yeah. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, no! Fuck. Go to the back. We'll go to the back. All right. Let's go to the back. I love the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's amazing. All right, what's your favorite scene? Oh. Uh, Damn it, Janet, that scene. Every single time I do something bad and I have to say damn it, I always say Janet after it, right every time. Everybody's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Rocky Horror Picture Show. Go, move it, move it, move it. 1993 was the first time I came to the show and uh, you know, I just, it was so much fun. Three or four people on stage yelling, screaming, and, and that was fun, there was no cast. Sweet progressed from there. In 95, we got the first official cast. The people, the MCs, the three or four that were on stage screaming, only one of them is left, and that's Susan. The cast grew from the original casting to a full cast with extras, with crew. It's, it's become huge. And next year is the 40th anniversary. Two years this year I've been involved with it but you still get that sense of community you're with people and you're having an experience and you don't get that a lot now you know it's like everybody is on their phone and and we've all kind of pulled ourselves inward yeah you have you know 3,000 Facebook friends but how many of those people do you really know and how many of those people do you really interact with and how often do you get to go out with strangers complete strangers people you have never met and do something and all have the same experience and have a good time. I've been doing this shit for 20 years and we still get half a goddamn theater full of virgins? Seriously! That's okay. We like to We are here at Rocky Horror because this is the first date my husband and I had 33 years ago. So we're celebrating. Living with Rocky is challenging. The main challenge we have is casting. Um, there's always issues right up until the week before the show with casting. It's finding the right people that will actually stick with it. We scare people away because of how intense we are. We were doing dress rehearsal and since we didn't have our Frankenfurter, we, I decided to step in so we could have somebody to block with and I just fell in love with the part. It was super fun and all over the place and I got to be over dramatic and ridiculous and silly and just fell in love with it. And it just makes it even more fun to be the only female Frank with this particular shadow cast. I'm Holly and I'm playing Brad. <laughs> Yes, Janet. Ralph's a lucky guy. No, he's not. She's not. I've uh, done probably 500 shows in different characters. I've done Frank a couple times. And I am a motorcycle in the show for about two seconds. I've been with Rocky for about five years now. I've done Columbia. This is my second year doing Columbia. And I love it. It's really fun. Uh, Once you get the face on and the fishnets and, you know, Spoiler alert, he doesn't turn out well at the end of the movie, but uh, but he's in control right up to that moment. Had several people leave because people are under the age of 18. It is not per se a sexual show. It's the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It is so ridiculous that it's Ladies, awesome. I am a virgin. I'm oh. a virgin. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm a virgin. You're expecting awesomeness? Yes. We, we try and keep it fresh. <laughs> and it is a big challenge to do so, because we try and do something different every show. Another big challenge is our tranny pack days. Tranny packs are the little packs we sell with the toast, the rice, and, 
a newspaper, cards, uh, squirt guns. Alright, let's do the squirt gun too. With the squirt gun? Yes, please. I also sell tranny packs. Your bag, any bag. <laughs> there you I go. Can do bags. Two bags? Okay, just the bag or yeah, one of the bag. Okay. Another big challenge is about 300 people each show. We have our own security team. They do an amazing job, and we have, you know, three to five people who do pat downs because we have to make sure the safety of not only us, but for the people in the theater. <laughs> Ladies, if you don't mind being searched by a guy, you can come over here and be searched by a gentleman. Once again, please have your bags open and ready to be searched. You know, we do have the repeat people that come and, and play, but we also have new people every year. And new blood is always good. <laughs> it, it brings new life to the shows. <laughs> yeah, this one needs a strip search. <laughs> We're virgins. We're virgins. We've never, I mean, we've seen the movie, obviously. Obviously, but not the show live time, so. I'm, we're really excited. This is our first yeah, we're time so here. excited. <laughs> I've not experienced it, but I'm very excited. I hope I get licked out by a tranny, motherfucker. <laughs> And last minute things do pop up all the time. <laughs> I actually forgot my shoes one year. Actually, that was the last show we did. <laughs> living with Rocky is living with a cult classic, which can be challenging, exasperating, wonderful, and just exhausting. <laughs> Everyone has their own expectations of what it should look like, what it should be. Um, people come to, come to our shows and it's not just a straight run show. We have all of our little in jokes and all of our local jokes and, and they think it makes it a lot better because it's not exactly what they were expecting. Um, people who have heard about it for years and years and years like, oh, I'm finally going to go see what this is all about. We're the back row. That's right. We're in the back row. <laughs> Obviously, there's the other side of the spectrum. People say, you know, I didn't like it at all. You know, and, and cult classics are like that. They love it so much. They they have their their own thought about what it, what it should be. Um, but I think we've made we've improved the uh, uh, newcomer's experience because we do try to interact them with the show. At the beginning, like in the 70s, especially mid-70s, when it was first, first starting out, it was very subversive, very subversive. You know, it had gay themes and, and all of this stuff. It gave people who were a little different um, something to sort of attach to. I'm gonna give you some incentive to stay. On the count of three, yell as loud as you can. One, two, three. You can go by about 300 people, you can go sit the ass down. And normally when you go to a theater, you know, shh, be quiet. Don't talk during the movie. Hey, Jen, you slut. Oh, shit. Are you an asshole, Brent? Yes. Are you on drugs, Brent? It's like everything you're not supposed to do at a movie, you get to do at Rocky Horror. You get to talk. Well, you talk at the screen. Everybody's wanted to at a movie, especially, um, you know, more of a bad movie where it, you just, you want to say something. You're like, what the fuck is this? God said, let there be lips. And there were. And they were good. And they said, Michael Rennie was good. You get to do that, and plus you get to throw stuff. How often do you get to go to a theater and throw things, you know? You get wet. It's It's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. I went to Paris um, back in August and went and saw it there. 
and uh, was talking to their cast. Their cast was great, very small. It was just like the five main principals and they did a, a great job, but their theater was so tiny. It was like 50 seats and they projected it onto a, a sheet. Um, and, and I talked to them a little bit about it and told them, you know, I said, oh, we do it and we, you know, 350 people and we sell out and they were like, what? And I'm all, yeah, we do it, you should come see it. Living with Rocky is living with drama. Boy, is it drama. We have people from every age. We have teenagers. We have people in their 40s. And, and every single person, it doesn't matter what age they are, somebody is part of drama at any point in time. It's just, it's not going to work. Yep, this is last minute things. An 18 year old forgets to bring an ID to a club that he's never been to before. Yeah. <laughs> but I know everybody that works there, so let's hope we can, you know, keep him out of trouble. And we usually deal with one situation every show, every year. Um, Sometimes it's really big, sometimes it's not. Well, we have a wonderful board of directors. We all help each other make the big decisions, especially with the drama. Um, and even during the shows, when something happens, somebody drinks too much, which happens more often than you would think. But yes, we've actually had to fire people on the spot because of that. And we've all gotten together. We've all gone and talked to that person. We don't, don't, we don't do it individually. It is a group effort and we try and keep it that way so it doesn't get personal. It, it is a business. It's not a friendship, it's, you know, we are friends, we are family, but when it comes down to the business side of it, you have to stick to the business. You can't let your personal feelings interfere. And it, it's very hard sometimes, you know, tears and screaming and sometimes it's bad. We don't need it. If it doesn't work, we don't need it. I'd like to take that and be so <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen, it's fine. I mean, we can, so I don't know. You can watch Charm all night I don't like being a bad guy. Sometimes I have to be, and it's, it's very emotional for me. Uh, I put a lot in t into this show and, and a, a lot of myself, and I feel that it's, it's part of me. Uh, yeah very difficult sometimes but we get through it all we're, we're here for each other we get through it and it, it comes becomes a happy place again <laughs>
So that's why you can never give up doing this. And I tried. <laughs> when you're I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I've got to focus on this. And I was right back at it six months later. <laughs> Even if you try to give up, you just can't. There's, there's no way of getting away from this. Living with Rocky is a sacrifice. Boy, do I know a lot about this. Um, uh, last year, my uh, sister outlaw, you could call her, my ex-husband's sister, uh, got married and I was able to go to part of the wedding <laughs> because we had a show and the only reason I was able to do that is because I had a stand in for my part. Um, and it, which is very rare. Uh, I, like I said, I've been doing this role magenta for uh, 22 years this year and uh, it's not many people want to do it. It's very commanding as she's in the whole movie. Um, and you know, luckily I had someone that wanted to be my understudy and wanted to do it at least once and I was able to go to my sister's wedding. <laughs> The big sacrifice is we do this for free. We are volunteers, each and every one of us, and you know, it's hard because you have to take time off of work sometimes, your actual day job paying you. <laughs> uh, and you know, sometimes when the drama unfolds, it's difficult to do it for free you know you're like well, why am I doing this sometimes you just think sometimes it's not worth it but in the long run it is it really is and you think that for maybe 20 seconds you're like what the heck am I thinking that for you know why why am I thinking that way of course it's worth it and it's it's a sacrifice that's definitely rewarding and sometimes when it gets really rough, but I've never actually flat out said I want to quit, I want to leave it, I want to, you know, I, I did uh, move to California for three years, left, it was hard, we did a farewell show, and by the end of the show I was in tears, I was just crying and crying and crying, up on the stage, and just sitting there, and I had people around me just hugging me and hugging me, and it was really difficult to leave, and I don't think I could do it again. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> Brad, please, let's get out of here. For God's sake, keep a grip on your... Living with Rocky is about family. Every family has its quirks, its problems. Um, because this family is so diverse, there are major problems that we run into and small problems and personality clashes and sometimes the Rocky family is better than your regular family because we accept you for whatever or whomever you are. Um, whether it be you know, a, a kid who's questioning him, his sexuality or somebody who's older and is you know, perfectly happy with, with themselves or um, somebody who's a little more conventional than others but they like to have this outlet. I'm Patricia Quinn from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Magenta. And I'm here in Salt Lake City for the first time ever in my life for Salty Horror. So I'm thrilled to be here. I've just seen all the wonderful mountains. I haven't seen the lake yet. I'm looking forward to that. Patricia Quinn was my second experience driving around an actor. Patricia it was, how can I show her the best of Utah? Um, and stuff, something that she would really love to do and uh, would like, love to come back to. Susan uh, took her out to dinner a couple times. and When Tim Curry doing the thing with Frank, and he didn't, 
as an actor, he wasn't, he didn't know his motivation, you know, he wasn't, he's like, who is this character? What, what am I doing here? And then he, he got the high heeled shoes and he put them on and he was like, oh, <laughs> so apparently the shoes were the magic. That's what she told me. She is an amazing woman and she is 70 years old. I can't believe that. She is, she's so full of life. She loves to tell stories. It was a blessing. It was so neat, so fun, and I, I just love hearing her talk. <laughs> so with Rocky Horror, I said to my agent at the time, um, I said, what is this? What's it, what is it? He said, I don't know. I said, I think it's something about a circus. I said, right. He said, but you have to sing a rock and roll song. I thought, oh, I can't do that. I don't sing rock and roll songs. He said, well, you've got to sing something, so sing for them. Michael Rennie was ill the day the earth stood still. I thought, wow. Sorry, I get it. Anyway, we're going way back. So he sang that song to me and I thought, wow, that's really special. There's something very special about that. So off I went down the King's Road. I was so scared to tell her that I played magenta because... Um, I didn't want to be one of those fangirls. <laughs> Even inside, I was going <laughs> the whole time. All the work that goes into it, there's the rehearsals that are you know, during the weekends, there's the dress rehearsals that are early in the morning on a Saturday or a Sunday. But there's all of this work that nobody ever sees. There's you know, getting costumes together, making the props. Um, the security details that we have to go through, there's setup here at the theater, there's transporting everything, there's making sure everybody has food and has water. Really, the sacrifice for the show is you have to plan your life around it. When it all comes together, you can see where everyone knows the cult classic has come through and it's an improvement rather than you're decimating it. It doesn't take much to fall in love with this kind of life.